I'm unsure how you ascertain Britain's poshiest road, but certainly Bishop's Avenue used to be, but it's no longer the most expensive road in London. It's not even in the top ten. Recently, Fillimore Gardens in the Kensington High Street area was the most expensive, followed by followed by other properties in Mayfair, Kensington and Belgravia. And Notting Hill bringing up the rear. And Bishop's Avenue has a lot of properties, but you can't generally see them. They're all quite set back from the road. And it's a rare old property that you can actually see into, like this one. Or this one. And this is an example of an old people's home for very rich old people. I think the problem with the Bishop's Avenue is it's a, a construction site a lot of the time. People, multi-millionaires, build trophy homes behind all the trees. It must uh, really annoy the neighbours. Every time a house is bought around here it seems to be knocked down and then a new, much more lavish one goes up in its place. There are a few vacant lots here. And this one, I could just get my gimbal and put my camera over the top. Though there's not a lot to see, a lot of vegetation. And it's not the quietest road in the country either, because a lot of our traffic goes up and down it. So if you want peace and quiet, the Bishop's Avenue is maybe not the street for you. So we just left the London Borough Barnet and now enter Haringey. Highgate, which we're about to arrive in, is actually split really between two boroughs, Camden and Haringey, and Barnet if you count the very edge, this edge. But before we get to the delights of Highgate, we're going to have a yomp across Hampstead Heath, which was uh, one of my adolescent playground so I'm really looking forward to this and first of all we are going to enter the grounds of Kenwood House which is now run by English Heritage but the last owners were the Guinness family who gave it to the nation and that's a preview of the house we're about to see and luckily we get to leave all this uh, horrible traffic noise behind And if you're a member of English Heritage or wish to join on the day, you can actually go in uh, Cambridge House. It's uh, quite a lovely, is it Jacobean or Georgian, um, mansion uh, full of uh, interesting rooms, but a lot of art. And this is where I fell in love with Joseph Wright of Derby. And he was a great master of candlelight photos. And this is one of his. You can find that quite near the front door, as I remember. Kenwood House is used a lot for opera during the summer. Good luck with your big weekend. Oh, 
And there's the house from a distance. So it's beautiful at the moment. It's early, early September and the weather's glorious. And this is coming up to a, one of the summits of Hampstead Heath, more of which in a moment. And there's a view over to Highgate. One of the things I did when I was 15 uh, was try to find the source of London's River Fleet. It um, starts at the summit we're at just now. And there's a, this puddle and then it goes under the very first bridge of the fleet, which is here. A wooden bridge. And it may even be the last bridge the River Fleet goes under because eventually it becomes a subterranean. So the River Fleet obviously is buried for most of its length these days, but uh, you can actually go into Hampstead, you can actually go to Hampstead Heath and see the beginning, and it's just uh, down at the end of that path there. I just swiveled the camera around to where I just walked, and this is the very genesis of what becomes Millfield Lane. And this is a bit further along when Milford Lane's become uh, an established pathway. I've been very lucky with the weather. So we're leaving the glorious heath and we're entering Highgate. That's Millfield Lane stretching away and this is Fitzroy Park. Which when I was um, a nipper used to be able to, it was a lot less uh, a lot, lot, lot friendlier to uh, passing people. So this is Merton Lane, beginning of a long climb into Highgate Village. And this is Highgate West Hill. A lot of stationary cars, so they're behind uh, a roadworks, which makes it's, this road a bit busier than it normally would be because you've got a whole load of cars being stationary. And the other vehicles were leased into the wild from their, their traffic lights. So it's unfashionably noisy at the moment. And they're not joking when that's, they call that the Summit Clinic because this is a, if you're in Highgate, this is a, a long climb into the, into Highgate Village. And that sign in the distance says Highgate Village one way and to the north the other way, which is always a bit of a, a laugh. Apart from the occasional vehicle uh, ruining the Georgian atmosphere of Highgate, I'm going to largely, well not even largely, I'm going to let the camera run itself now.
and shut up and let you enjoy the walk and I'll rejoin you in Palm Square. This is us coming into Pond Square and it's actually named after some real ponds but they were filled in in 1864 and reputedly it was a local hermit who dug the first of these in about 1300 or so but uh, in the mid 19th century the council filled the ponds in to make way for the garden and the surrounding roads. They said that the area's drains and privies emptied into the ponds and created unpleasant odours and suspicious floating items. Mm -mm. The scientist, that's the scientist, not the painter, called Francis Bacon, conducted freezing experiments on a chicken here just to see if it could be frozen and uh, prolong its edible life. Alas, Mr. Bacon uh, died of a chill soon afterwards, but this is one of the scientific glories of Highgate. This is the uh, Highgate Literary and Scientific Institute, where the Highgate Society is based. So while the Pond Square is... a lot of, a lot of it's overwhelmed by vehicles, um, you can, if you block your ears, Imagine you're in the 18th century. As long as you don't look this way and see all the cars coming up the hill. It's that van again. That's the one that we saw earlier on that uh, almost ran me over as we entered the square. Obviously they don't want me around. This is Highgate High Street. That was, uh, trams used to uh, struggle up there after horses struggled even more up this hill. Goes all the way down to Archway. I guess it's got a lot of, uh, apart from this Costa, got a lot of old shops uh, that stood the test of time and. Uh, and not just chain stores. That's the Gatehouse Theatre at the top. 
and this is Highgate School. So if you're a pupil at Highgate School, you've got your own security guard. It's kind of school it is. And these are lovely old almshouses. Just beside the school. Down the hill a bit. And this is uh, the view of London because uh, we're still really at the top of Highgate Hill. And we're going to now start to go down rather rapidly. right at the bottom of, of Jackson's Lane, it's an art centre and on the busy main road. There's this little lane down to Highgate Station, it looks like they're fencing off the the old Highgate Station. And our tour is at an end.